Alexia Nicole and I'm living my life by design. So we are doing part two of the let's get personal Q&A, okay? These are all the questions that I got on YouTube. If you ask a question via Instagram, I answered that in part one. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right on into it. All righty, so the first question is from Silky Black 2006 hey boo. Um, so what is your two-year plan as far as career and living situation you plan on moving out by yourself? Um, my two-year plan. I eventually plan on moving out by myself, of course, um, but I am a person that I don't make hasty moves like at all. I want to make sure that I am at my financial standards for you know moving out and buying a house like I don't want to rent like that's that's not my goal I'm not saying that I would not but I would prefer to buy so I might just wait a little bit longer I mean like what's the rush I'm never home anyway especially as a flight attendant so that is just you know some things that I'm considering um, I don't want to make a hasty decision just just to say that I did it like that's not who I am so yeah, that's what I'm waiting for, just to make sure that I'm at a financial um, position to really want to do that. Um, and then, I mean, you know, love life might come along and things might change and I might, I, who knows. Um, so what is your two year plan? I don't, I don't Silky Black, I don't really have a two year plan. Like I'm just really going with the flow. Like I still plan on flying. Um, will I still be here at this airline? I don't know. That might change. That's another reason why I'm not really in a rush to move because if I do, or should I say when I do, change airlines again. Well, really it's an if. It's, it's a really big if. Um, who knows where I might end up. So I, if I do change airlines again, it's going to be one last airline and that's it. So that answers that question. Not a question, but a request. I answered this in the last video. Can we see more fun? Um, and like I said in the last video, um, it's not really possible to see more fun because we live thousands, hundreds, I don't know, but miles apart. Okay, Fawn lives in Phoenix and she works out of New York and I live in Houston and I work out of Dallas. We don't see each other, y'all. <laughs> like, we just don't see each other. I know y'all loved her. I I loved us being together, too. But, you know, times change and, and, and things happen, you know? But every, you know, when I do see her, trust me, she'll make a cameo. Antoinette says, would you date a Jamaican man? Yes, I would. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I don't really know if I want to go in more detail about that, but yes, I would. <laughs> um, what language would you want to learn? Simply being that I live in Texas, I would probably want to learn Spanish just because there's just a lot of Spanish speakers in Texas. Um, even though I, I took Spanish back, you know, back in the day and I, I just didn't grasp it. But I would just say, you know, Spanish. Do you have any tips? for someone new to keto and a reserve flight attendant. Um, so new to keto and a reserve flight attendant. So basically like the meal prepping aspect of keto. I used to do, when I first started keto, um, I would say start doing um, intermittent fasting. So that cuts out, you know, on how much food you feel like you need to bring because you won't be eating all day. When I do intermittent fasting, I really only eat two meals a day. Um, so I started off doing, making chia seed pudding, which is easy to make, easy to bring. So that would be one, you know, snack, or really it would be my breakfast or my first meal of the day that I would have. Bring a salad, you can make like a, a big thing of salad and have your protein on the side, that's easy to make. Um, and then for like like an a, a actual full meal, like a lunch or dinner, 
I used to do, um, like I really enjoy like a, a taco style bowl, like keto style, but it would just have like cauliflower, um, sour cream cheese, guac, you know, salsa or, or tomatoes or whatever in my protein. And that was just always easy for me. Um, and then I would also do, this really doesn't have to do with being reserved. I mean, anything that you do, you want it to just be meal prep friendly. Um, and to me, these things were meal prep friendly. And as far as snacks, like I like chocolate. So I, um, gosh, now my mind is drawing a blank on that chocolate that I used to buy, that I need to buy again. Um, but I would bring like, pack like those little chocolates. I'll tag it down below so you can see. Um, and that was really it. And just a lot of, oh, and I drank a lot of sparkling water too. I drink a lot of sparkling um, flavored waters. So it'll help me not drink um, juices and sodas. This question is a really good question. Um, this is from For The Win. What does living my life by design mean? Sorry, maybe I should know this. Maybe, you know, no, no. I mean, I don't think I really ever explained what that meant. But it's really simple. Like, I'm just living my life by design. Um, I took a real estate course. Um, through Keller Williams is called bold and they had all these affirmations and you know just you know things that they spoke and that was one of them you know live your life by design it really just resonated with me and I was like man that really is like important to like build the life that you want you know um, I don't know if any of y'all have been through this I think probably all human beings go through this you know phase a period of life where you're just doing things to get by you know just trying to make the next buck or you know just trying to stay afloat and I went through periods of life like that and I couldn't stand it like I am not a person that enjoys doing anything that I don't want to do you know like I understand that yes you have to make sacrifices and things like that but like as far as like going out and working a job that you can't stand or you might almost hate or you know um being with someone that you don't want to be with or whatever the circumstance may be where you know that you're doing something that you truly don't like then why are you doing it so for me, life by design means like I am designing my life the way that I want it to be. I am a flight attendant because I enjoy the freedom and the flexibility and I get to travel. I do real estate because I like that one-on-one -on -one experience with customers. I like knowing that I'm helping somebody make this major purchase in their life and it's making a difference. Like I only want to do things that bring me joy and for me things that bring me joy are making other people happy as well. So me meshing these two careers together is me building my life by design and whatever else may come after that but anything that I do in life is always going to be something that I choose to do that's gonna you know just make me happy so that's what hi I'm Alexia Nicole and I'm living my life by design that's what that means I'm even gonna answer these silly questions and it might not even be silly to you Devon Rich <laughs> but it says do you have a man and if not can I be your boo um I don't have a man I don't have a man and I can't answer that if you can be my boo part because I don't know you. <laughs> you know me from like this interaction here, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know you, sorry. <laughs> when do you plan on buying your own home and if you weren't a flight attendant, what would you, what would your dream job be? And this is from Zenadia Smiley, am I pronouncing that right? Um, I plan on buying my own home. I answered this in the last uh, the last one too actually um, I would love to be able to purchase my own home within like the next year honestly like that would be a really good goal for me but that also just depends on like where I'm at like a, a lot of things just depend on where I'm at um, but yeah that would that would be the plan um, if you weren't a flight attendant what would your dream job be I went to school for fashion merchandising and I always desired to be a stylist. Like, 
that's what I always wanted but I kind of got caught up into the retail management side of things and I just got burnt out and I was like forget it um so yeah like maybe if I wasn't flying or maybe this could be something that I do a little later on in life you know just fulfill that goal of being a stylist stylist as in like fashion stylist clothing stylist not like hair Demont McPherson says since you started traveling traveling some odd years ago unless you always have been um what is one or two of the most important eye-opening things you learned about yourself others the world and life okay we're getting deep um so i have been traveling my entire life yeah, like since I was a, a baby baby, you know, I think one of the first places I went to was Canada and Jamaica at like three months old. Um, of course, you know, you don't really remember those experiences, but um, my parents are from Jamaica, so I always went back to Jamaica every summer until I was like almost, what, 14, 15, basically until I started working and had a mind of my own, I guess. Um, so yeah, and then my mother was always the type to want to, especially during the summer when we didn't have school, to hop up and, and take a road trip and go here or go there. And we did a lot of family vacations and cruises. Like, I come from a family that loves to experience different things and go places. So I have been traveling for a while, maybe not like huge international destinations, but I've been doing things. I've been going places. Um, so... What is one or two of the most important eye-opening things you learned about yourself or others, the world, and life? One thing that I learned about myself a long time ago as a young kid, I just realized that I was adventurous and I was open to learning and, and doing new things. Um, you know, of course you have your comfort zones, but I was always just like, ooh, I want to try, ooh, I want to do, ooh, let me see. Like, like, that's just who I am and I'm still that way to this day. Um, I think that's really important to, you know, be inquisitive and just find out, you know, different things about life because, like, you know, as U.S. citizens living in America, you know, you stay in this bubble of comfort of what America has to offer and by gosh, like, you get out in the world and you see so much. So um, I appreciate that aspect of travel. You know, it's just opened up my eyes to just, you know, learning more and being adventurous and trying new things. What have I learned about others? You know, this may be as cliche as cliche can be, but you know, from one country to the next, like people are people. We all love the same, we all hurt the same, no matter what you look like, what language you speak, what third world country you may live in, or what luxurious island you may be flaunting on, like, we are all the same. Like, travel just makes you so much more open to the world and ideas. So, yeah, good question. Thank you for asking that. Um, Virtual Concierge says, when are you gonna start doing more keto prep videos? Um, I'll start doing more now since I'm, you know, back full-time keto um I'll have to really put more thought into it because usually my meal prep is super last minute because I'm a reserve flight attendant but I will try to put out a few more videos just so y'all can kind of see what what I'm eating what I'm not eating what some of my favorite meals are and just give y'all ideas and y'all can give me some ideas okay back. what are some of your fave tv shows you're currently watching this is from Everett B by the way um, and he has a few, so I'm going to answer them one by one. What are some of your favorite TV shows you're currently watching? I'm a TV junkie. So I love um, TGIT, um, which is Grey's Anatomy, um, now Station 19, um, and A Million Little Things. Like, I love those three shows. I love This Is Us. I like to watch all those, like, doctor shows, like Chicago Med and um, The Resident and uh, what's the one? with Sean and he has, um, what's it called? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, I like to watch The Masked Singer. Um, I'm not really huge on reality TV shows. The only one I really watch consistent, consistently is The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I like to watch The Kardashians. <laughs> so those are a few. Any music artists you absolutely stand. I mean, if y'all know me, y'all already know I am a Beyonce. I mean, Stan, sure, 
like I'm a huge Beyonce fan y'all and it's not because I'm from Texas it's not because I'm from Houston like let me tell y'all I used to be a Beyonce hater back in the day when Destiny's Child first came out like I was like no Kelly Rowland is the girl you know she's chocolate I'm chocolate like that's my girl but um I went to Beyonce's first solo tour I think the album is slipping my mind right now um but I went to that concert like on the whim my friend called me up and she was like hey I have an extra ticket to a Beyonce concert you want to go and I was like sure why not and baby I got to that concert and Beyonce was you know, hanging from the air and like doing flips like from the top of the stadium like on one of them you know suspension cord things and she's flipping and flipping and flipping and singing and just beautifully you can't even hear her breathing and I was like okay that was the moment I knew that I would one never miss another Beyonce concert and two that I was a Beyonce fan because the girl just puts on a show okay so for all the Beyonce haters out there stop it like stop it I'm never saying like she's the best singer in the world but she can definitely sing but she is for sure for sure probably the best living performer I have ever seen okay so yes Beyonce stand all day long um other artists like I love Riri like I love a good reggae vibe um I, I, I love Fantasia um so yeah I can go on and on and on and I'm not gonna do that if you could have any other career besides real estate and five tenant what would it be I answered that I would want to be a stylist um who do you think will win this presidential election child Honestly, there's there's nobody up on these debate stages right about now that I'm really into. That's the honest truth. Um, and just the way that America is set up, we might have Trump again. Like, I, I hate to say it, but that's just the vibes that I'm feeling and it sucks, okay? If y'all like Trump, that's your own business. But, you know, he's not the man for me. But Completely yeah. random English. bonus question. How do you feel about Kaepernick and the others who take a knee during the national anthem? Um, I think everybody has the right to express themselves however they feel. You know, like, and that is something that, you know, as the human race, we just don't respect about people. Like, people have the right to express themselves as long as they are not physically harming you you know you know it really sh I mean I guess it could be emotional for some um but you know like these these men and women that are taking these stances are doing so because they feel strongly about a subject and they have the right to do so that's how I feel about it now you know if he want to go play football and whatever else like I could care less but when it comes to standing up for something that you believe in and you feel like expressing that in a certain way, then kudos Okay, CC Lo Soy, I'm hoping I'm saying that right, says favorite cocktail, um, Jack and Coke. Well, when I'm, when I'm not keto or when I'm not being good. When I'm keto, it's um, Tito's and uh, soda water. <laughs> not necessarily my favorite, Jack and Coke is my favorite. Um, ever been to a Disney park? Yeah, back in the day. Way, way, way back in the day when I was a child. Um, what's one misconception about you? One misconception about me. Ooh, that's a good one. You know, it's probably, not, it's nothing as of recent, I don't think, but I do know like, especially you know just years ago like my college age early 20s I could say um, people always used to tell me that I have a very intimidating um, presence you know like men would tell me that all the time or just people just felt like I you know I wouldn't be nice and <laughs> I'm far from mean, you know, I, I am straightforward. I, I can be cutthroat in certain circumstances. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm, a, a, I'm a really kind person. My cousin Corinza said this to me one time. She's like, Lexi, you're not necessarily nice, but you, you are very kind. <laughs> so yeah, like, you know, I guess, you know, my, my RBF, you know, my wrist, my Weston B-I-T-C-H face. 
um, can be real strong sometimes. Um, but I, what I do think is that this YouTube channel has really helped me with that, especially when people start noticing you. Um, it allows me to be more aware of how I am presenting myself and carrying myself because I don't ever want to run into one of you all and y'all be like, oh my gosh, she was so mean or da 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 like, because you know, that's, not, that's really not who I am. So just learning to have, a, you know, a more open presence in public and not seeming like so... <laughs> You know, so I guess I would say that's probably the biggest misconception. And one time, um, I had flown with a subscriber. Like, we had, you know, he walked on the plane. He was like, oh my gosh, it's you. Um, shout out to Sunny. Hey, Sunny, he's at Delta now. Um, and I remember, like, you know, this is when I was working mint back at JetBlue. And he came up, and, you know, we're sitting on the jump seat just talking. And I said a curse word. And <laughs> his whole reaction just... It tickled me so much. He was like, oh my God, you curse. And I was like, yeah. You know, like, I, <laughs> y'all would never know this because I try very hard not to curse on this channel. Like, that's not how I want to present myself to anyone. Um, but I have a little bit of a potty mouth, okay? So, <laughs> I get that from both of my parents. Um... So yeah, that was just so funny to, to me. He was like, oh my God, you curse. And I was like, yeah, I, I say some words every now and then. <laughs> so yeah, that answers that portion of the question. And then what are your thoughts on gay marriage? My thoughts on gay marriage are the same as my thoughts on Kaepernick taking in a knee. Live your best life. You know, like, I don't want to answer to anybody on this earth about what decisions I'm making for my life. And I don't feel like anyone that chooses to be in a gay marriage should have to do that either. Like, if that's what makes you happy, and whatever you believe to be your higher power, your spiritualness, your God, your Jesus, that's who you talk to on that day, you know? Whatever you do on this earth is up to you and how you make, you know, what makes you smile from the inside out. Like, I truly believe in people living their lives by design. You is gay marriage for me particularly I'm not gay so I don't you know I, I wouldn't be um, getting married to a woman um, but would I go to a gay wedding yeah absolutely you know love is love and I am a Christian and I know that you know a lot of y'all have your own beliefs and, and things of that sort but you know things evolve and it's, it's not my place it's not my place I'm gonna say that again it's not my place to judge anyone in their decisions because I'm far from perfect and a sin is a sin okay no sin is greater than any other sin y'all remember that okay we have to take a break I'm gonna go out and get something to eat and then I'm gonna try to come back and finish answering these questions not that y'all really know the difference but I just want to tell y'all what was happening <laughs> alrighty y'all I am back I have like an hour so let me try to hurry up and finish these questions where did we leave off? Okay, next question is from Catrice. What's a passion or hobby from your childhood you still wish you indulged in and why did you stop? Gosh, that's, that's kind of a tough one, Catrice, because I don't really know if I had any real hobby hobbies. Like, <clears throat> we were very, I was a very, I said we, because every time I think of childhood, I just automatically think of my cousins and brothers because we literally did everything together. Um, but my parents and aunts and uncles, um, they always kept us very active. Like, I did everything. My battery's dying now? <sighs> Hold on. So yeah, so as a child, my mother always had us very active. I did everything under the sun. She literally put us in everything until something stuck. And for me, nothing really ever stuck. And I mean, when I say I did everything, tap dance, ballet, piano, soccer, um, every sport that you can probably think of. Like, my mother always had us trying something. I played saxophone in middle school. Then I ran track um, throughout all my high school years. Um, and I don't know, I just was never really like an activity person like 
I like to shop and I started I got a job and I started making money and that's that's what became more important to me than you know school activities so maybe I would say you know if I you know I would have kept running track and you know doing things like that and see where that would have taken me because I stopped running I didn't run my senior year um, I decided to join what is it called when you get out of school early co-op co-op you get out of school early and you you go to work, you know, for the rest of the day. I did that because I was like, I want my money so I can go buy shoes and clothes. Um, but yeah, so I've done a lot, but none of it just really like became like a true passion per se. Um, other than shopping. <laughs> um, so I hope that answers your question. That's as, that's as good as I can answer it. If I think of something else, I'll let you know. This is Cecilia Stallings. She says, I want to start weight loss. Where do I start as far as food and exercise? Well, you know, I, I think with weight loss, everybody's journey is completely different. I was actually just talking to my FA2 about that. You know, and like I was telling him, you know, that I do keto and he's like, I tried keto, but it wasn't for me. And you know, you just, you hear different things. So I definitely say as far as food, um, look, look, go to your doctor, see what they say, but just start like trying to do a regular, like, you know, healthy balanced meal type eating and see how that goes. Um, but as far as exercise, if you, it, and that also depends on, you know, like how active you are now, like what can you do? Like, can you get out and, you know, run a few laps around the track yet? Or do you need to like start off just maybe walking, you know, like low impact, low intensity walking, you know, to kind of get, you know, your heart rate up and things of that sort. Um, but y'all know. And you know, I really should be sponsored by Aptive because I plug them so often. But Aptive really is a really, really good app if you're looking to work out. And I mean, they have beginner level, intermediate level to, um, I want to say pro, but you know, whatever's after intermediate, like the top level. Um, they have workouts for beginners, you know, from walking to running and things like that. So that would be a really good app for you to check out. It's only $15 a month and I say only. But, you know, a lot of people pay for gym memberships $20, $30 per month and never go. This app is right at your hands. It's $15 a month. You can turn it on whenever you want. Use it as much as you want. Unlimited access. So maybe look into that and see if, you know, that can kickstart off your, your exercise goals. Okay. Wade Wigan says, would you live in Dubai and take advantage of the growing real estate and hospitality industry? No. Um, the funny thing is, is literally for years, my mother has been saying, go work for Emirates, go work for Emirates, why don't you go work for Emirates? <laughs> I'm like, first of all, mom, I don't think, I'm, I don't think I'm a face of Emirates, you know, I just don't personally think that, I could be wrong, I've never tried, um, but I don't desire, like, to live in Dubai, that's just, I just don't, you know, like that, I, 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 y'all know, y'all, I don't, I want to be home, so, no, I haven't, and, and, and no, <laughs> so, Bumble B says, do you judge yourself by the same standards that you judge others, if not, are you harsher or more lenient, um, well, for one, I would love to say that I don't judge others and I, but that's probably not exactly true because everybody has a moment or a day or whatever where they're being judgmental. Even if you don't speak it, you think it like I'm, I'm definitely not a person that, that likes to speak judgment on others, but you know, you do see people doing things <laughs> and you think like, uh, like, what's going on? Um, but I try really hard not to do that. Um, so I try not to judge other people because everybody goes through their own life experiences and it molds you in your own way. So what I've gone through and what I know about life may not be something that you've experienced and you don't know these things about life. So for me to pass judgment on somebody 
and I'm totally clueless, you know, about, you know, what they've experienced, what they know, what they don't know, then that's unfair. Um, do you judge yourself by the same standards that you judge others? I hold my own self to, a, to I want to say a high standard, but I hold myself to, to Alexia standard. Like, whatever it is, which is maybe higher than the normal standards. I don't really know um, because I'm, I don't concern myself about what other people think I should or should not be doing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I hold myself to a, a sure, a, a pretty high standard. I'm, I'm actually really hard on myself about a lot of things. That's why I'm in therapy. There's a lot of times where I don't necessarily feel like I'm at a certain spot point in my life like where I would want to be like a lot of you all have asked like when I'm going to purchase a house because I know I was talking about that a lot before I turned 30 um you know that was the goal and I was right there and then I had a major shift in life for some things and then you know that kind of got put on the back burner like you know things like that it's you know I'm hard on myself about things like that maybe not achieving the goal when I said I wanted to, but just having to take the moment to realize that it's okay, you know, still be motivated and push towards things, but you know, it's it's okay. So yeah, I'm kind of hard on myself sometimes, but you know, I'm, I'm also like, mm, it's gonna be all right at the end of the day. KCA says, what did you learn about yourself or anything in general from your last relationship? Casey, <laughs> I learned that it is okay to step outside of your comfort zone or the things that, you know, your preferences, um, you know, as men and women, I, I believe we all do this. You have, I mean, you might have a physical list or you just have a, a, a list in your mind of things that you want out of, you know, a... Uh, uh, a significant other if you find everything you want in one person that's amazing for you but I'm picky <laughs> and you know I, I know that I'm picky it's hard to find somebody that has everything so yes you can make a list and you can have your standards but it's okay to sometimes look past those things or say okay well you know maybe let me give this a try you asked about the last relationship, so I think I said this before, but you know, the guy that I was dating, we were great, but um, I desire children and he doesn't, he already has one and he doesn't want any more. So for me, even going into that relationship, I was already in the mind, like I had never seriously dated anybody prior to that that had children. I didn't want to date somebody that already had kids, like that's just not what I wanted. Um, but I was open to it when I met him, um, and he was a great guy, still a great guy. Um, and you know, he kind of busted up that stigma for me because it wasn't a bad experience. Things <laughs> happen without giving all my tea and sharing all of his business. You know, being open is what I would say that I learned in general, like yes, of course, you know, like if you're not six two or even six foot, okay, maybe I can date you. I, I can I can give it a try, maybe. You know, if you have one kid, you know, maybe we can see how that dynamic is. Just being open to the things that you're completely shut off to is um, what I kind of learned about myself. And I also learned that I'm a really good communicator in relationships, okay? Like I communicate really well. <laughs> <laughs> Which is important with this job. <laughs> How do I feel about dating apps? That's what R.E.P. asked. The last guy that I was dating, I met on a dating app. So, I have nothing against dating apps. You know, I mean, that's what they're for, you know. And in this day and age, do, you know, once again, back to preferences. Do I prefer to meet someone the organic way in person you know you pushing your grocery cart down the aisle and he stop you and ask you for your phone number give you a cute compliment yeah sure why not um but i mean we have these things in our hands 24 7. i can just swipe left and right left and right left and right all day and boom you you find somebody and you connect i think dating apps are great honestly great i mean there's some crazies on there but you know you just weed them out. All right, last question, and I actually think this was the first question. 
um, or one of the first questions, it says, would you date a Jamaican man? And this is from Andre Skyers. Yes, I would. And I guess I didn't go into detail about it before. I've, my thought process has evolved and changed on this over the years. When I was um, a young girl that didn't understand love, didn't, you know, didn't, young, okay, I didn't know what marriage was or boyfriend and girlfriend. I didn't know. But I, what I did know at the time, or what I thought at the time, <laughs> I would always say, I'm, I only want to marry a Jamaican man because I want to keep it in the blood. You know, like, Jamaican strong, you know, keep the bloodline strong. Um, like, I really remember thinking that at, like, younger than 12. And then I got to, you know, middle school, high school, and you start realizing things, right? You start, okay, I love all the men in my family. <laughs> my father, my uncles, you know, like, I love them all. Jamaica strong, okay? But, you know, when you watch certain things, you see certain things, you're like, oh, baby, I don't want no Jamaican man. <laughs> that was my thought process at that point in life. I was like, no. Nah, you can miss me with that. I'm I I can't cater to a Jamaican man the way that Jamaican men, you know, seem to want to be catered to. Like, you know, the just the, the stigma of being a Jamaican man, good and maybe negative. Um, I went through that phase, and then now I'm at a point where um, I don't believe in categorizing people in general. You know, like I just I don't believe. In doing that like I don't want somebody to categorize me you know or define me as one thing and think that I'm gonna be a certain way so I have broken that thought process when it comes to just thinking period about people so yes I would date a Jamaican man and I would just get to know him for him is it a benefit that he's Jamaican because then he can probably mesh so much better with my family probably so but um yeah so i would be open to it but i've never actually dated a jamaican man it would be very interesting but yeah i'm open to it you know somebody <laughs> all right y'all that's all i have for the q a i had a lot of fun answering those questions i hope y'all found out a lot more about me than just the regular flight attendant life i hope it opened up your eyes to who alexia nicole really is and why I'm living my life by design. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, my little short thumbs. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Share this video with someone and be like, this chick is kind of cool, watch her. Um, yeah, and oh, of course, don't forget to subscribe, y'all. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thank you so much and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Okay guys, I'm back really quick. There are two questions that I forgot to answer that I said that I would answer in this video. And since I'm a woman of my word, I'm gonna answer. Okay, so this one is kind of flight attendant related. I know no flight attendant related questions, but since I said I would answer it, and I'm sure a lot of y'all want to know, um, Miss Lady Love said, do you plan on going mainline? <laughs> And the answer to that for me is, I don't know if I plan on going, I don't know where I plan on going or if I really plan on going anywhere. Um, I am interested in going to other airlines. I mean, y'all already know, I talked about being financially stable in this video a bit. Um, and y'all know regional pay is trash. Okay, that's trash. Um, so that is a big motivation for me, but, whatever airline I go to next, if I go to another airline, that's it, okay? Done deal. That's gonna be my third baby. Like, third time's the charm. <laughs> that's really it. But honestly, I mean, there's just a lot to weigh when it comes to um, deciding on the airline that's best for you and not only deciding on if that's the best airline for you, just can you even get in? You know, like, as much as a great flight attendant I feel that I am. Um, you know, you have to have a connection with whoever the recruiter and interviewer is and all of that. So um, I am constantly 
writing um, down a list and just of pros and cons of different airlines and what would benefit me. The main thing that I'm looking for is quality of life with whatever airline it is. And if that's me staying here, then that's just what that is. Um, so yeah, that's my answer to that. Sorry, it's not just a definite yes or no, because when you say mainline, I'm assuming you're saying American Delta United, and that's not, you know, those aren't the only choices out there. And y'all already know what I'm talking about. Okay, and so the last one for real this time, I think. How did your allergy test come out, and did you figure out what is causing your allergies? So at the beginning of the year, I did a vlog about going to get allergy tested and, um, you know, all of that. So yeah, in that vlog I talked about it, but the vlog was kind of long, so maybe you didn't catch that part. Um, I am allergic to quite a bit of things, but the main things were cats and dogs, <laughs> which I know I have two dogs, but whatever. Cats and dogs and um, dust mites. And then it was one other thing, like some type of pollen. Um, so those are the things that I'm allergic to. I have started taking my allergy shots and the way that the allergy shots work, they're not steroids. They actually um, shoot me up with or inject or whatever you wanna call it with um, the, the environments that I'm allergic to. So basically it's just supposed to help build your immune system to those allergies. It's a long process, but you know, the last few times that I've been home and nothing has changed, Aspen and Denver are always in my face. Um, I haven't really been having the same symptoms and I don't know if that's because when the day that I first went to the doctor, he, he gave me nasal spray and I have been using that consistently. So I don't know if um, that helped, but usually when I would go home, like, I would have the worst, like, irritated red eye, you know, um, running nose, sneezing, just like I would just be sick. Um, and I haven't felt that way the last few times I've went home. So, I mean, you know, a little irritations here and there, but so yeah, that's what's going on with my whole allergy shot process. I think it's definitely worth it if you have severe allergies like I have. Um, look into it, it's kind of pricey, but it's worth it. All right, y'all, for real this time, done, done, done. Subscribe, like, share. Let me go um, hop on this flight.